What's going on, guys? My name is Jake. I'm Asus. And this is your Body Comp Prescription, where we help you navigate through all things health and fitness. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at BodyCompRx. But uh, Asus, what are we getting into today? Yes, guys, welcome to this week's episode. Um, this week's episode is going to be about muscle building, aka how to look like us, how to look yoke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm yep. kidding. <laughs> but, you know, in all seriousness, seriousness, guys, I know there's a lot of you guys out there who, you know, you've seen our previous episodes that have been about like fat loss or, you know, your goals may be different. And if you want to build muscle, you want to, you know, get big, get stronger or just general build muscle. This is the podcast video for you. Um, yeah. So let's jump right into it. Jake, um, I kind of wanted to open this week's video with asking you, what do you think are the most overlooked or neglected ideas about muscle building because i feel like a lot of us even myself sometimes you know we tend to focus or have tunnel vision on certain aspects of muscle building but we forget what probably be would be the most important parts yeah the, i i definitely agree i think before we get into those like overlooked things or underrated things i want to i think we should understand how muscle building works at least from like the very beginning, right? Like not necessarily go into the anatomy, physiology, all that kind of stuff, but understand what needs to happen in order for muscle building to happen, right? Um, There are three things. If you do one or more better, right? You need to have muscle damage, which is exactly how it sounds. So work out, you know, do enough uh, work in order to break down your muscle. So that way you can hopefully rebuild it, right? Through Mm -hmm. your nutrition. Number two, metabolic stress. Metabolic stress is just basically like muscle exhaustion. You know, um, a lot of people can associate this with like, if you've ever done an exercise that caused like lactic acid where you feel like that, you know, that lactic acid buildup in in your muscles. That's a good example of metabolic stress. And then lastly, muscle tension. So muscle tension, the easiest way to think about this is changing uh, the load in which you use, like the weight weight. like making the weight heavier over time and stuff. So we need Mm -hmm. one or more of these things in order to initiate the process of muscle building. Now that we know the three things that are necessary in order to begin the process of muscle building, we need to start with one of the, if not the most important principle of training, which is progressive overload. A lot of you have probably heard of this um, before um, from wherever you may have heard it from. But if you don't know what progressive overload is, is it's basically ensuring that you are making your training harder over time, right? Um, and that's to make make it so that way, as you adapt, it's still challenging your muscle to grow, right? Progressive overload is one of the easiest ways to achieve uh, one, if not all three of the things that I just mentioned, right? Muscle damage, metabolic stress, muscle tension. So you can increase your weight Uh, the next workout in order to increase muscle tension, or you can increase your sets and reps to try and achieve a greater level of metabolic stress or like muscle exhaustion, right? Um, And a lot of times if you achieve one of those things, you induce muscle damage, which is that third thing. So um, that's why progressive overload is a lot of times the most focused on um, principle of training, because it's really easy to manipulate variables within your training in order to try and continue to build muscle. Yeah, I think um, those were really great. I think uh, one also thing I want to add is decreasing your rest time in between sets. It's another good way to, you know, do progressive overload. Mm -hmm. Um, But in school, Jake and I, um, you know, we, we had our professors always stress when we're talking about muscle building and how does an athlete get stronger or how does the individual get stronger. We always talked about progressive overload. Um, we think that, and you know, science backs it up too. Progressive overload is probably the best way to build muscle because it allows you to, you know, because at a certain point, everyone get, builds a plateau, right? You get to a point where you're at a plateau and, mm-hmm. or even, you know, you could scratch that. Even if you, do any exercise you want a certain point you're going to get good at it and you'll be able to do that whether that's like a push-up pull up anything you want right but in order to get better at it and do more reps and do you know do that exercise with more uh weight you would need to do progressive overload to keep improving right um the improvement may be slow but that is essentially how we could get stronger 
Yeah, and the progressive overload is a way to avoid those plateaus, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's so like you you briefly mentioned like shortening rest times, and yes, that that is definitely another way that you can um, attack progressive overload. There are so many variables that you can adjust within that um, that make uh, make it a good opportunity for you to build muscle. But um, I know there's probably a lot of people out there that are curious about how frequently we should be training in order to build muscle. You know, should I like do the the good old bodybuilding bro split where I only train each muscle one time per week and like really hammer that one muscle hard uh, per week. So that way, you know, I, I've done so much damage that I can't physically train another day in that week. Or should I not do that and increase my frequency? Um, so I want to want to address that really quick. Um, the the really basic rule of thumb is that if especially if you have like lagging body parts or there's something specific that you want to build right so let's say um my calves are small because you know they're huge you know but um <laughs> um you know let's say i wanted to focus on building my calves right if that was a main part for me i would want to increase the frequency at least on that muscle group so that way um you're you're putting yourself in a position to start breaking down the muscle build it back break it and you do that more times and it'll add up over time to create more uh more muscle growth right but you also have to take into account the size of the muscle so the calves are relatively um small of a muscle group um but something like your back right that's a pretty big muscle group for bigger muscle groups you should be focusing on training them like one to two times a week, um, two if you're really serious. But in my opinion, you shouldn't really be doing more than that because of how long that they would take to recover. You know, we don't have to operate on a seven day week in order to like organize our training, but usually we do. So, you know, two times a week for big muscle groups, three times a week for small muscle groups because they recover a little bit faster, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. And, you know, I think at least personally for me, sometimes like after hard, like, for example, leg day, let's just say your quads and your hamstrings are like super sore. Mm -hmm. It takes about four days, maybe five for you to be like, OK, they're they're pretty fresh again. I could probably do another leg day, you mm -hmm. know. So and that's kind of, and that's kind of like a really good example, I think, because you can't expect to hit quads today and then, you know, expect two days from now to go hit legs again because they're going to be sore and you're not even going to be able to move as much weight as you did for that previously uh workout right yeah and i want to i want to throw something in here real quick too because um this is pretty much like an ongoing debate between um the genders right um with especially specifically with legs but i think the way that this ties in right is that when jesus and i used to train together we used to train legs like ridiculously hard like for several hours to the point where we basically could not train legs again until the following week. And I think that's a point to say that we may have gone overboard um, in our leg training. Um, but also to the other side of the coin, you should not be training your legs four plus times per week. Because that's a sign of, I didn't do enough during any one of those workouts. And on the other side where we have, we train so hard where we physically could not train another time in the week, that's too much. So finding that middle ground is really good. I think you can train legs twice a week, but three times, four times is kind of pushing it in my opinion, um, especially if you are, you know, doing the right amount of work within each uh, session. But yeah, is there anything else example. you wanted to add on? Uh, anything no, I else think, you wanted uh, to add on frequency? Yeah, I think for those who are kind of like, I guess this more goes for the beginners, right? Those who want to get in the gym, those who want to build muscle but don't know where to start. Um, Jay kind of covered the frequency of working each muscle group. I think that kind of ties into the frequency of just working out in general um, mm -hmm. because beginners, you know, ACSM uh, claim that beginners should probably start at somewhere between two to three. And then, then they say intermediate should be three to four days. Advanced should be four to seven days right but to kind of counter that argument you know a lot of elite level athletes don't work out seven days a week all the time you know 
um, you, you, you hear the regimen and, you know, they may work out three to four times a week. But if, if they say three to four, that's already at like at a beginner intermediate status, right? They don't need to be working out seven days a week because you can only do so much. And how Jake said earlier, if you're doing your workouts correctly, as they should be, you should not be okay the next day or the next two, three days from that to be like, oh yeah, I could hit this. I could hit this muscle again because you, you should still be sore. You should still feel that. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that, um, I, I kind of want to move on from frequency because I think this ties in perfectly with the whole being able to train too soon or being able to train, um, like you not being able to train really, really soon is intensity. Intensity is another one of those, um, principles of training that we like mentioned earlier that goes along with like progressive overload and stuff like that. Right. Um, in my opinion, I think intensity is the most overlooked part of uh, trying to build muscle because yeah. I think it's really easy. Obviously, everyone's situation is a little bit different, but in my opinion, I think it's really easy to step into a gym, right? I think it's really easy to buy a gym membership or buy home gym equipment, whatever your situation is, and just follow XYZ program that says, oh, you just got to do three sets of 12, right? In order to, you know, this is your program. You just have to do three sets of 12, but sometimes that's not enough, right? You know, we, um, I'm not saying you need to do this every single time you step into the gym, but this intensity is a really good way to help break those plateaus again, right? Um, incorporating things like drop sets, right? If you don't know what a drop set is, it's basically like, um, let's say I'm doing, I'm curling 30 pound dumbbells, right? When I'm done curling those 30 pound dumbbells, maybe I cut the weight in half and pump out a couple extra reps in order to increase the metabolic stress, right? Increase greater muscle exhaustion, right? Or do a superset, same thing, right? A superset is doing uh, two different exercises back to back, right? Um, again, with the metabolic stress, trying to increase your um, muscle damage done or stuff like that. Right. You know, we may do that once every, every while, like maybe if we have a training partner and we're trying to like, come like, you know, compete with each other, you know, um, doing something like that to, um, you know, increase the intensity of that current exercise. I think that should be incorporated a lot more often. Um, because, I think it's really easy to get stagnant with the weights that you use and the reps that you do. Um, and this is a really good way to not necessarily like push the heaviest weight possible, but still get that amount of muscle damage that you need in order to build muscle. Right. Because after a certain point, your body gets really efficient. Right. If I'm curling, let's say those 30 pound dumbbells right now, but I'm curling those 30 pound dumbbells six months from now, something's not right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, not that it, you know, the progress needs to be super, super fast, but this goes back to the whole progressive overload thing, right? Your body doesn't want to work hard, right? It just wants to work efficiently because your body can adapt and it works really, really well, to be honest. So if all I'm giving my body is the stimulus of curling 30 pound dumbbells, then it's never going to get any bigger and cause enough damage in order to, um, you know, keep that muscle group growing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I think um, I, I, I want to touch on a few things here. Um, you brought up like, you know, metabolic stress. I think for those who are listening who may not understand what Jake was saying, it's like it's that soreness feeling and when you're working out, you know, that feeling where it, you know, it hurts and it's sore and it's kind of like that burning sensation, mm -hmm. you know, that's what you should be feeling during your workouts. I think, um, you know, sometimes I like to say people kind of go through the movements, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you could build, like how Jake said, it's easy to get on a workout program or listen to what person next to you said, oh, do uh, 12 squats or, you know, do 12 curls, but, but by the end of those 12 curls if it's not burning or if it's not you know feel, making you feel some type of way where it's like little stress on your body 
it's not really doing any anything good for you right it's not doing what you what you want from it um and that kind of bleeds into my next point um if you finish your sets and or and reps and you still feel like damn i could have done this for like like five more times Mm -hmm. that's a that's a little light bulb in your head that should be going off and saying yeah i think i could increase my intensity by adding more resistance or adding more weight right or maybe um since i'm adding more weight i'm decreasing the amount of reps because i'm now moving heavier weight so things like that is something people overlook at overlook when they're talking about intensity because they're kind of just going through the motions right Mm -hmm. Um, and and yeah that's a that's another good point to um to like include like a drop set or something like that right or a superset if you know that you got some in the tank you know that the next set just do a drop set you know use that same weight if you don't necessarily feel comfortable going up but mm -hmm. use that energy that you have in order to do more work while you're there you know what i'm saying so sorry Uh, continue with what you're saying yeah yeah, that is perfect because I think Jake, Jake could probably back me up on this. We'd rather have someone say they're doing less sets than saying, oh yeah, I did 10 sets of squats because um, I felt good. Because if you're doing 10 sets of squats, you could have easily added more resistance to that, to those earlier sets. And then, you know, you could have been done with just three and called, yeah. it, called it a day with your squats, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, so that's what, that's what I had to say about that. Cool. And I think the... Another, another overlooked or underrated part of muscle building is uh, time under tension. Some of you may have heard this. Some of you may not have heard this. Um, this is like not an official like tr- uh, principle of training or anything like that. This is something that has been kind of like um, developed and accepted by like people who weightlift a lot. And it's just a, a phrase that basically describes how long your muscle is actually like contracting and working for right so time under tension is not how long your set takes right i think that gets confused you know if you're if your set is 12 reps of bicep curls again right the likelihood is is that you're only doing maybe 12 seconds worth of work right because you'd say it takes one second to go up and down because it happens really really quickly right but you think about how much time you're actually doing work now i won't get into like biomechanics or anything like that that has to do or physics or anything that has to do with weight over time anything like that but if i had to ask you do you think 12 seconds worth of bicep curls is is better or worse than 40 or 45 seconds worth of bicep curls what do you think the answer is the more time under tension that you have the better because this is a really good way to um, initiate muscle damage again right increasing that tension within your muscle i know in in past episodes we've talked about um you know isolation movements or like um, eccentric um, parts of the movement stuff like that Um, the eccentric portion of the movement which is usually the lowering phase. So like if I'm doing a bicep curl, right? And it's at the top near my head and I'm extending my arm back to straight at the bottom, that is the eccentric portion. This is a really good way to recruit those muscle fibers. Sorry for science, you know, but recruiting those muscle fibers, increasing the tension that's happening in your muscles during the exercise. Because again, it's really easy to go through the movements, go through the motions and think, oh, well, I'm curling 30 pound dumbbells and that's pretty good, you know? So like, how am I not going to build muscle? But you can even lower that weight and increase your time under tension and create more damage than, you know, a set of 12 with 30 pounds or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah, And if those who are listening, if that went in one year and out the other, basically Jake's saying, you know, you got to take your time when doing these and not work out passively right because this would only benefit you and another thing i want to bring up um you know maybe we could talk about this in another episode but mind muscle connection right that Mm -hmm. kind of like this is kind of perfect here because if you're doing it and it's a set right and you want to get the most out of it a lot of the times 
you know, if you're taking your time, you could really just think about, about the movement and try to focus on that muscle group that you're working out and really focus on working. It's how Jake said, um, constraint concentric and eccentric, right? So when you're like, for example, uh, curling, bringing that, uh, dumbbell or barbell up and then lowering it down at an easy, slow pace is more effective than me saying, Oh, I'm gonna knock out 10 reps in two seconds. Yeah, and I, I, I think this, um, a phrase that I think everyone does know is control the weight, right? Yeah. You know, a lot of times we hear that like, oh, control the weight, make sure you like control it down, stuff like that, right? I think everyone has heard of that phrase. Mm -hmm. This is time under tension is basically the equivalent of controlling your weight, making sure that you are, you know, moving the weight with purpose, basically, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's a really good way to explain it. But yeah, mind muscle connection. This is a really good way to develop that. But yeah, I think we'll talk about that in a in another in another episode. Um, yeah. But um, any any other overlooked things or underrated things that you think are you know a part of muscle building that people don't really like you know consider too heavily? No, I think those were very perfect. I think those who uh, want to get into uh, muscle building or already you know want to build muscle and they're a part of this journey. Uh, sure, you know, take some time, think about what we just said, and really evaluate your your workouts and you know what you're doing for yourself, and making sure you have, like how Jake says, in a perfect world, we'll have all three covered. Mm -hmm. But at least if you could get one or two down, that'd be perfect. That'd be a good place to start. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and I think to not keep this too long, um, I just want to wrap this up by saying, your rest and recovery is just as important as everything that we just said here, right? It doesn't matter what intensity techniques you um, implement into your training. It doesn't matter, you know, progressive overload will get you certain places, but if you're not recovering properly, you will not be able to go past your current limits, right? Because if you break down, break down, break down, break down your muscle over and over and over again, but you're never recovering properly, AKA resting, eating, um, you know, doing your proper mobility, stretching, stuff like that. You know, you will not see the progress that you want either. And I won't go too deep into this because we've already talked about uh, recovery a couple of times uh, on the podcast. So if you haven't checked those out, I really recommend that you do because we go pretty in depth into um, how recovery works and why it's so important. But I just wanted to re um, introduce that to everyone that's listening to make sure that muscle building, if muscle, muff, ooh, excuse me, if muscle building is important, recovery should be just as important. Uh, that's pretty much all I got to say. Any closing comments for you? That's all. That is all. All right, guys. Uh, thank you as always for tuning in. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully this gave you some insight into um, what we really consider to be uh, important parts of building muscle and hopefully you can implement maybe some drop sets or supersets or um, focus on your time under tension during your next workout and you'll feel a greater amount of muscle damage or uh, muscle exhaustion or muscle tension, any of those things that we talked about, right? So um, yeah, we won't keep you here too long. Um, thanks again for tuning in and we'll, uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace out.